Welcome in to episode 022 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. My name is David Farmer with Intice, and with me as always is David Bertoncini. How you doing, sir? I am awesome. I'm doing great, man. I'm just jacked up, excited. This week is the turkey week, man. It is a so big we got, week. We got Thanksgiving here, uh, and it's actually a sweater weather. If uh, you have to, you have to throw up that little uh, SNL uh, little thing about sweater weather. You know what? At least the weather's turned. Oh, sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Oh, God, I was. Finally, sweater, sweater weather. weather. Oh, sweater weather. It's about time. It's about time. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Oh, finally, sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Uh, it's finally cooled down just a tea bit down here in Florida. Yep. Enough for me to go hot coffee. Mm-hmm. And as it says, since it's Thanksgiving. I'm going with the, the turkey leg. Uh, so the we got turkey the sock leg cam socks. going right yep. now. Sock cam this week, man. So since we didn't have a guest, we had to. Our guests just seem to be my socks <laughs> sometimes. I love but, it. Uh, so yeah, you're right. It's a, so it is Thanksgiving week. It's also Black Friday week. Woo-woo. Uh, it has been quite cold, which is nice. I've got a little thicker. Uh, uh, a hoodie on today. Make sure we're staying warm. Um, and we're getting ready to close down the office uh, Thursday, Friday, make it a long weekend for us, which is uh, very nice and uh, pretty excited about the Black Friday. And that kind of brings us to our main topic today. We're going to be talking about Facebook events and uh, how you can utilize them at your dealership, what they are, who's doing them, why you should consider it, and kind of getting into that. But we're also going to do something a little bit different, aren't we, David? Yeah, let's cover uh, a little bit of the uh, automotive news of the week. Current events, yeah. So there have been uh, some pretty cool things happening uh, 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 recently in automotive news, uh, current events. And it was the first thing was the release of uh, the Tesla Cybertruck. The Tesla Cybertruck, um, pretty cool looking truck. The first time I looked at it, the first thing I thought was, man, that looks kind of like a DeLorean. The second thing I thought is that is the ugliest vehicle I've seen since the (laughs) Pontiac Aztec. Now, do you remember that vehicle, the Pontiac Aztec? Uh, I got some stories on those vehicles, (laughs) but uh, yes, I do remember the Pontiac Aztec, which uh, also, um, I think it also was a... um, uh, Pontiac, no, no, it's um, not just the Aztec. It yeah, was the ugly. Aztec. So it, it was, was horribly ugly. Yeah, it was, was was it a minivan? Disaster. Was it a sport utility? I really think it's like one of the ugliest vehicles that that was ever produced. I think Suzuki did one too. The X ninety that was pretty hideous. Do you remember that? That thing? was kind of like weird little too. Two, little so, two seat car. It looked yep. like a yeah. George Jetson was it a bubble. Truck? Was it not a truck? Was it SUV? Was it a coupe? Yeah, it was very weird. It, it was a. Uh, it was whoever bought it was just a disaster. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually, you know what? It's funny is is there's a lot of hate going on right now online about the Cybertruck. You know, people don't like the styling or anything like that of it. If you've ever dug deep in the trucks, and I'm a, you know, I drive a Toyota Tundra. I'm a truck nerd mm-hmm. myself. Love trucks. Um, I actually, it reminds me at first glance from the side, the front not being the case, but from the side uh, with the sharp lines, the triangular uh, looks, and everything like that. It reminds me of a Ford Gertha. Gurkha. So it's like a, um, what that is, if you, you Google it, pull I'm gonna, it up. I'm going to Google it. Yeah. A, um, it's a G-U-R-K-H-A. It's basically an F, I think, 550 that they send to Canada oh, and they put this kit on. Okay. It's like an armored vehicle. It's pretty badass, man. Um, a lot of basketball players and stuff like that, they buy them. They start at like $350,000. Um, they weigh 20,000 plus pounds. They're like two times the size of an H2 Hummer. They're just massive vehicles. So when I saw that with its styling, mm-hmm. it reminds me of the uh, the Gertha. So I was like, man, that's that. I liked it because yeah. I, I actually am a fan of the Gertha truck and I think it's pretty badass. But, um, you know, a lot, not a lot of people are going to love the styling of it. But, hey, it's a Tesla. I mean, he's he definitely got to come up with something different. Well, yeah, cool. yeah, I mean, what's really cool too. I mean, I so first when I saw it, you know, I thought it was very ugly, but I mean, quickly it grew on me. Um, once they got, uh, I was able to see a few different angles of the vehicle instead of just a, a, a pure profile view. Um, the wheels and the way that it w- works. You know, I sat through and I watched the the live event as they they rolled it out. Um, very cool, very cool. And what what's um, what's really neat about it is the reasoning that they made it designed the way that they did. So they got rid of the body on frame um, and they created an exoskeleton. And that's kind of why it looks the way that it looks right now. So one of the things while they're doing the, um, the reveal is 
them wanting to get into the truck business, I don't think they just they just wanted to create a Tesla truck. I think what they what they wanted to do is kind of reinvent what a truck was. Um, and I think they're very successful in doing that. So instead of using the body on frame approach, which every truck has been, like they said during the launch for the last 100 years, it, um, they, 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 uh, they move past that. And one of the things that uh, Elon mentioned um, during the release of this vehicle is the using the inspiration of uh, aircrafts, where older aircrafts have that same style of body-on-frame type of design, and then they, they move to an exoskeleton, which allowed um, for uh, the airplanes to be a smaller, lighter, and, and much much better for a performance standpoint. And that's exactly what they're doing with with the uh, the Cybertruck. Yeah, it's. It's styling is, as we mentioned there, is definitely different, but the usability of the, instead of, like you said, of having a body on frame in typical, you know, ladder frames or, you know, on those bodies, it, it creates just so much, uh, probably a lot more stability. Um, you know, you have that separation between the cab and the bed being a truck owner. I know when I go over like railroad tracks and such, and you've got that. You can that, feel the body roll and the flex. You can feel, yeah, you can see that flex, especially if, if you've owned the, if you've driven a convertible, you can see the trunk twist behind you. When you yeah. look in the rear view, you can actually see the whole body twisting. This thing has got to be like stable as possible because if you having that type of construction on a vehicle, it's going to be solid. I mean, it, it's, I would hate to get into a wreck with the thing, but I mean, well, well, probably it probably actually was no. A wreck I think, pretty I think that that's kind of the whole reason that they went with the exoskeleton. So instead of just going with the exoskeleton just to replace the body on frame design, which uh, Elon basically uh, compared to a, a a frame with the sack carrying a sack of potatoes, meaning you have the frame, the structure of the vehicle, and then then you're carrying the cab and you're carrying the the bed. Um, the exoskeleton design really now there is no frame. Everything mm -hmm. is is contained with it. And then the, the metal that they used is a cold rolled steel, which is extremely strong. So you think about this thing getting in a accident, um, it, it, everything is just going to bounce off of this thing. It's bulletproof. Mm -hmm. um, during the uh, the rollout, they took a sledgehammer to it and they, they, they smacked it right in the middle, middle of the door. No dent, no ding, no nothing. They wow. took that same, same sledgehammer and uh, smacked it into the door of an F-150. And of of course, it just collapsed. Sure, and of course, everyone saw the blooper when they, they threw of course. the uh, yeah. <laughs> they threw out the window, and the window broke. It wasn't supposed to break, but you know the window's not steel. And, and well, so let's talk about the the glass a little bit. So now they're they're bringing out what they're calling the armor glass. Okay. So it basically is, as he said uh, during the during the the launch, it is uh, it is metal glass. So that's okay. designed to be like armor. The reason that the uh, the glass shattered when they threw a uh, a, a large ball bearing uh, at it, what they said was um, after after looking at it is they tested it multiple times, no crack, no cr no crack, no crack. Of mm -hmm. course they did before they went in front of millions of people <laughs> and then they were going to do anything. They tested it, sure. but apparently what happened is that the, the, the what what they're saying what happened right now is every time that they tested it, it created micro cracks mm -hmm. in that glass gotcha. and then the last one was just a little bit too much and it ended up uh, uh, ended up uh, uh, shattering but so the the glass is supposed to be bulletproof um, it is their new Tesla armored glass which is supposed to be so much more stronger they did some additional tests on stage looks like it's pretty amazing stuff well better than um, the windshield like I had to replace the windshield of my tundra a couple months ago and you know you get cracks in them yeah you know rock chips are popular here just going down the highway here in Florida. I mean, I've got rock chips on the Forerunner, got rock chips on my Tundra. It sucks, yep. but what I believe with that armored glass, that should definitely make a big improvement on the yeah. front windshield, side windows. I mean, I don't think there's going to be many contractors going to be hitting the side windows with a with a sledgehammer or ball bearing. But yep. you know, if something was to hit it, you know, just uh, in a typical work environment, yeah, it probably won't break. So. Yeah. They, I think it should do what, what they're hoping for it to do. But the um, speed of the thing, I mean, 0 to 60. I mean, 2.9 seconds. Wow. I yeah. mean, uh, 
500 mile range on the thing, zero to 60. Yep. You know, four wheel drive capabilities. I mean, that, that's just going to be, it's, it's, it's badass. I mean, that's quicker than, than most all well, year. It, it, they, they, they did a test, um, compared to a, uh, a, a brand new Porsche 911. Sure. And it, Zip it pulled past. away from it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that truck uh, with the weight and everything else, 14,000 uh, pound uh, towing uh, capacity. And I think uh, I think that is with, there's three different models coming out, a single engine, single motor, dual motor, and then a, a tri-motor. And I think that tri-motor uh, four is- four-wheel drive. It, is, right. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be the one that's going to have that zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Plus, there was, uh, of course, what came up on the news this week was the F-150 being pulled uphill by the Tesla truck, right. by the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck's pulling it uphill. Of course, everyone's going to chime in and hate on it. And they're yeah. like, oh, well, you know, there was no payload in the F-150. So being a rear wheel drive, there's no weight on the rear wheel. So the rear wheels just spin as the Tesla truck dragged it uphill. Yeah, You know, either which way. Still, I mean, you've got a a 5,000 pound truck being dragged up the hill, which does have enough torque to, to make it go the other direction. But the yeah. Tesla truck did, did drag it up. They're supposedly going to redo that test again next week. Elon's like, Hey, throw in a payload. Let's go. You know, let's, let's roll. I mean, whatever challenges you want to throw at it, we'll re-engineer your test. But bottom line, it was to show off that this thing could do a lot of stuff. The news was saying, looks like another commercial for the cyber truck. Yeah. Basically at yeah. the end of the day, cause Hey, it's publicity and everyone's talking about it. It, it made a, it made waves, man. So made a big splash. Yeah, and, it made a I mean, huge splash. Uh, Twenty nine thousand or uh, thirty nine thousand for the base price with the single motor, and then I think up to fifty nine with the the tri motor and the extended range. So still very, uh, very, very economically priced considering fifty nine. I mean, you said or sixty nine. I think I think it's uh, it starts at thirty nine and then uh, for sixty nine with 69? the tri motors and then yep. you add autopilot for another ten grand. No, probably. it's actually included. He said. Oh, really? Yeah, sweet. I mean, yeah. think about it. I mean, you get yourself a you know a loaded up uh, F two fifty diesel. Grand. I mean, you're, yeah, 60 more. Grand. Yeah, you're yeah. like seventy. Oh yeah, 000. if you go with the diesel and everything, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And this here with the range and everything, you I mean, you're doing better than a diesel truck. Yep. I mean, right from from the giddy up. So this would be more economical than a diesel truck, and this is this is going to put some it's going to put some hurt out there in the market if they can produce these as as many as many as that we hope we would need to fill the yeah. uh, the needs for it. But I mean, that's I'm in. I, I like it. I think I would probably man, exit you, the tundra. You have to man, consider it. You have I to consider am it. Definitely right? considering one yep. now. So, in addition to the Cybertruck being released um, last week, we also saw a new electric vehicle being released by Ford, uh, and that is the Mach E. Um, so, very exciting vehicle. Not only is it an electric vehicle, but it is a sport utility vehicle, and it is a Mustang. Uh, so, it's checking off a lot of boxes for a lot of different people. Very cool looking uh, vehicle. Um, I also uh, did the review on that vehicle. Watch them uh, release that vehicle. They're very excited about it. Of course, uh, it is going to be a Model Y. Uh, competitor, so the uh, Tesla Model Y, the smaller sport utility vehicle that is coming out soon. Um, it is also a competitor to the Audi e-tron uh, sport utility vehicle in a similar size and shape and in, in, in body style. Uh, looks to be a very uh, cool looking vehicle. I think from a styling aspect, uh, I think they they nailed it. I think it looks great. What do you think, David? It looks great. I was introduced to it from my Ford dealership. Uh, I was down there doing some. Uh, a call of duty with the uh, the dealer sitting down with them, and they're asking me, "Hey, do you have anything for the for the Mach E?" I looked at it first time. I really had a good chance to look at it. Was sitting with the Ford dealer, and they're very proud of it. They yeah. t- they've uh, it looks great. They've taken already at that dealership fifteen deposits. Oh wow, on. really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, we're talking. It was before the official release date, and they're like, "Yeah, we're taking deposits on it." And to see somebody put a deposit on a Ford 14, 15 months yeah. before it's released, I mean, that's that's speaking volumes. First time in the in the vehicle's heritage and history that they've offered it in anything other than a coupe or convertible. Now yep. they're offering, you know, a four door SUV. Is it an SUV? Is it like more like a cross utility vehicle? They, they're calling I, it an SUV, a two row uh, sport utility vehicle. Is it, that's what they're calling it? Mm-hmm. It reminds me of the uh, Porsche Cayenne. The yep. side styling when you see it kind of from that rear angle, you look at it. I was like, man, it looks like a Porsche. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it is a very good looking vehicle, and I was like, yeah. 
really taken back. And I think Ford is doing a great job with the move of introducing this vehicle. I think the timing's perfect yep. with the Model Y coming out, the Tesla Model Y. This would be a great competitor for that. Price less than a Model Y. But then, of course, you're going to appeal to your Mustang buyer. You're going to appeal to an SUV buyer. I mean, you're, you're covering so many different markets with – uh, we've got one, two, three, four different trim levels of the vehicle. Yep. Um, I mean, it's one of the things I liked about the styling too. Where I thought they were very smart is if you look at um, uh, h- how they've painted the vehicle, and you you really don't think about uh, paint as a styling aspect because the customer can choose uh, their styling. But if you if you actually look uh, close at the at the vehicle itself, you'll see that the the, the top body line, uh, the painted part, the color keyed part, uh, actually comes down lower than the actual roof line itself. Uh, so from a side profile, your eye really just looks at that the painted part of the vehicle and not the black roof part, which gives it more of that coupe appearance, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you know it gives it more of that Porsche Cayenne or maybe the uh, the BMW uh, six series, um, where it looks almost like a large car. Mm-hmm. Ver- or a large, you know, kind of a tall sedan versus a sport utility. I think that if it was painted all one color, it would give you more of a sport utility look. It would it would raise that 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 uh, uh, that that rear top end of the vehicle. So I think it was really cool the way that they did that. They also did the same thing down at the bottom. You'll notice uh, in between the tires, they kind of brought up. Uh, the the color I don't know if you can see that on there but it actually kind of compresses yeah. the way that the vehicle looks it, it creates more of a sporty car look than a, a traditional boxier uh, sport utility vehicle so very cool um, uh, uh, way to really make this look more like a Mustang defining the line so that rear part of the roof the C pillar so you got A B C that C pillar yeah. is what you're talking kind of about pulls that painted, down yeah that painted yeah. C pillar matching the, the body and then that rocker panel down below mm-hmm. on the bottom down I'll there. Now, I, I didn't notice that until yeah. you just pointed it out to me. Now I'm looking at a red one, a black one, a white one, and a couple of different trim colors and a gray one. And having all those, that black at the bottom makes it look, sh- you know, smaller and brings brings it in tighter. So like you said, it looks like a, more like a Cayenne than, than an SUV. Yeah. And so as I said, my initial first, at first glance, I was like, well, that looks good. Yeah. Shockingly. The, when you hear it on paper and until you see it, you're like, I don't think this is going to be really a good idea. But then you see it and you're like, wow, yep. that is good looking. Complete opposite of the, t- <laughs> the yeah. cyber truck. You're like, uh, yeah, completely different, right? You're like, uh, yeah. then you have to kind of digest it and grow on it. This yeah. right here from, from hello. It's, yeah. it's, Hey, this looks good from hello. And the numbers are, are really attractive on it. I think it's really going to, uh, once again, it's, it's definitely attacking the e market there. Definitely. It's, it's going to, it's They're going to sell quite a few of these. Yep. So right now that vehicle will qualify for the $7,500 uh, tax rebate uh, because that's done by the manufacturer. Uh, the It is going to be released in 2021. So, you know, potentially 14 or 15 months uh, or maybe a little bit longer. Uh, the price point is going to be a 43000 starting price on the base model or whatever they're calling the base. Select 43895 when you got your a couple different trim levels there. Yep. And um, it's going to have 332 horsepower for their base model and then their premium or the GT up to 459 horsepower, which would give you 0 to 60 uh, in the mid threes. So not quite as fast as a Cybertruck, um, but pretty darn close, probably close enough. I think <laughs> mid threes is probably good enough. I think that's going to be real close to, uh, you know, the 2029 11. That's for sure. If you want to drop the kids off at school and then uh, drag race a Cayenne, you can. So that's... Yeah. Uh, that's pretty pretty impressive. That's pretty cool. And I mean, it also does have a lot of the stylings of the Mustang, where it has um, uh, um, the, uh, the 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 tail lights. They have the three slashes that kind of give you that that Mustang look uh, in the back, and very aggressive front headlights, giving a very uh, aggressive athletic type of uh, 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 look on the front end. So yeah, very cool. Fifteen inch or fifteen point five inch screen. That's one of the things that I was kind of surprised how much time they spent in the release of this vehicle going over the electronics or the user experience and um, 
uh, you know, the, the entire process that a customer will utilize as they're interacting with the vehicle, where they have the OK Ford, kind of like the OK Google. Mm-hmm. You can talk to the vehicle um, and uh, really r- removing a lot of the knobs uh, and uh, digitizing all of that, which is something that uh, the Model 3 and now the Model Y has done extremely well in really simplifying all of the uh, controls and just having it in that 15-inch display. So you got your audio controls, your climate controls, probably most likely autopilot. You've got all your vehicle systems. But then they also did have a heads-up display, so you don't have to look to the right so much. They had one straight in front of you, so just a summary of uh, what's what's happening there. The, uh, the the next generation sync system is part of that 15 and a half inch screen there you that, go. Uh, that's gonna have in there. So it's supposed to have a lot of new genius updates to it. So it, it's you're really gonna have to be you know, up to speed on product knowledge with that vehicle to, to you know, give it a better, better delivery experience for your customers. Yep. So it's pretty sharp, man. Good job, Ford. Yep. All right. So with that, we're uh, 21 minutes into the first segment of episode 022 of the Modern Dealer podcast. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back and we're going to be talking Facebook events. Welcome back in to episode 022 of the Modern Dealer Podcast. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about uh, Facebook. We're going to be talking about Facebook events. So just a real quick recap, David. This is the first time it's just been me and you for, gosh, I want to say three weeks in a row, right? We had last week, we had... Uh, 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 L- Lemur. <laughs> Tamir. 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 I was messing Lairer. with his name. Yeah, Lairer. Yes. Tamir Lairer. So Love that guy, man. Tamir, yeah. love so, you, dude. I apologize. We keep <laughs> messing up your name. And, and it's, he's yeah. such a good dude, man. Yeah, he was I great. Like he was great. I really appreciate um, having just a little bit different perspective. Yeah. Um, we had Sandeep before. And the Sandeep the week before that. And then we had Lloyd before that. So this is our first time. Just, yeah, uh, it's like just a month. Yeah, well, next yeah. week, I mean, we've got a busy week next week. Yep. Um, we're actually will be... Offsite, uh, doing the podcast from offsite. Yeah, a little remote action. Yep, and then um, getting into the holiday, such. So um, a lot of stuff happening up here in the next couple of weeks at the Modern Dealer Podcast Studios. So yep, absolutely kind of cool. But yeah, just you and I today, and that's why we went to the old uh, sock coverage and a couple other things. But kind of some cool stuff getting into is is we're gonna getting into some of these Facebook events. You know more. Uh, events and realistically, you know, Facebook advertisements too would be another point of view. But what I wanted to put out there today, and I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna put this post on LinkedIn. But what I want to put out there is like today, this week is the best week to be in the newspaper. I'm gonna throw that there out you go. there. Okay, like, why the newspaper? And, and I'll tell you why. All right. Of the entire year, I would not touch the newspaper, but for Thursday, I would pull out a full page ad. The reason why, and it's going to tie in with the the Facebook portion of it, is the reason why is after Thanksgiving dinner, and that newspaper is laying around. Either you're using it for, you know, for your dog to pee on, you know, if you're yep. potty training a puppy or something like that, maybe good. But what I do see the advantage of it is what I used to use it for 12 years ago, when kind of came up with this being Black Friday week and like the idea of like let's pull out a full page ad, let's run a silent sale. Let's have customers come onto the lot when we're closed. That was like my my big hook. So, yep. hey, look, we're going to be closed Thanksgiving. Our employees are home enjoying their Thanksgiving with their family. I put that in the paper, and then I said, you know, come by our dealership. You know, our doors open at 5 a.m., just like the Walmart, just like every other retailer. We wanted to open the doors early. Mm-hmm. Sounded nuts, but let's open up early. Let's give away for the first 25 people to buy a vehicle. Let's give away, at the time, a 32-inch, you know, uh, flat-screen TV uh, was a big hook, man. I was yeah. like, you know, 12 years ago, like, whoa, we're getting a, that big of a TV. And, you know, we're going to throw that in. We're going to put it in your trunk. That was that was the hook. Um, you know, priced out cars below, you know, blew them out. They were just basically, you know, internet loser prices is what we yep. put out there. We went probably a thousand less than the internet price, but we encourage customers to come to the store. So I would actually, this ties in together by talking about a full page ad in the paper. If someone was going to do a bomb of advertising this week, bombing meaning they're going to totally just cover everything. News. This would be the only day in the entire year of all 365 days that someone would actually actually pick up the paper out of sheer boredom after a meeting with their family and open up and see your full page ad there, which transpires into Facebook. And if someone was scrolling through their Facebook feed on Thanksgiving, 
after they've done their entire Thanksgiving day, they posted their pictures and everything like that to find your perfectly placed advertisement, basically duplicating what I just talked about in the newspaper, but then you've, you've mirrored the same message to, to Facebook that, hey, you know, our dealership's closed. You know, we're at home enjoying our time with our families. Come by our dealership. Check out our best prices. We spent an entire day hang tagging vehicles, just writing out the prices of some crazy losers, making sure that we didn't, you know, checking the back screen, make sure we didn't add yep. a bunch of stuff to the car. But that was, that was the whole the whole premise and the whole idea. But as I said, now using, uh, you know, using these Facebook events, Facebook advertising, so many different ways that you can advertise now with Facebook versus your traditional advertising newspaper, which would be the other 364 days out of the year. In my professional opinion, dealing with dealers and stuff, the other days of the year, nobody's looking at the paper for the rest of the year, pretty much. They want those circulars that are coming out on, on Thursday, on Thanksgiving. They're like, all right, well, yep. hey, I saw it advertised online, but let me just check. And like, oh, man, uh, doorbusters at uh, Best Buy with a 55-inch TV. I saw some crazy prices. I'm like, I am actually will pick up the paper that day. And that's what I said. This premise, this segues into Facebook events. Okay. All right. So a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. A <laughs> lot to unpack there. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, maybe a, a little too much coffee this morning, <laughs> but it's all good. Kawa. It's all good. Kawabunga. Uh, yeah. Kawabunga. Yeah. All right. So, um, so uh, with that, uh, I think you, you brought up a few good points. I think that uh, this is something that, of course, we, we're not going to be able to do this year for Black Friday, but that it would be something you might want to consider for next year is really start to plan through what you want to do for Black Friday. Now, I can tell you that for some of our dealers, we've been working with them for the last couple months to kind of prep for what is going to happen on Black Friday. And we've worked with some dealers that are contacting us today asking us to um, coordinate some sort of advertisement for Black Friday, which is two days before uh, the Black Friday uh, sale. So um, I'm definitely a proponent of, you know, creating a strategy early and uh, thinking about maybe how you can use different uh, media uh, to be able to advertise that event, I think is great. Utilizing newspaper and mirroring, mirroring that into Facebook itself. So with that, Let's talk about Facebook events. So this is something that has kind of uh, come up over the, the I want to say, over the last year or so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Facebook has been around for quite a long time. and um, But I think that a lot of people are, are really trying to figure out, well, how can we utilize Facebook um, and create a campaign, create some excitement around um, uh, an advertise uh, an advertisement campaign, and we see a lot of direct mail companies now offering Facebook events, and we have some digital marketing companies like ourselves creating a Facebook event and then wrapping that with a lot of different uh, advertisements. Um, so typically. When dealers are uh, creating these Facebook events, uh, let, you know their buyback events, or their five thousand dollars over Kelly Blue Book for your trade, or their three thousand dollars over Kelly Blue Book, or you know whatever the big hook is for those sales. Um, kind of what what I'm seeing, and you can uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, but uh, creating an, a Facebook advertisement, putting out a lot of different hooks, kind of in one um, uh, in one uh, uh, Facebook advertisement, and then really leveraging Facebook Messenger as a way to communicate with these potential customers uh, to get them to be signed up for the sale. So is that kind of what you're seeing, David, with a lot of dealers maybe that you're you're doing business with, or we're doing it as a, kind of a partnership with the Entice team? Um, that's kind of the core of what, what, what a Facebook event is right now. So if any dealers haven't seen this or haven't tried this in someplace else, that's that's kind of the core of it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so basically what you had said was, you know, they create a, um, a secondary Facebook page. Uh, the advertisers create a secondary Facebook page to not interfere with the primary page, like your normal Facebook page, which my coaching, I've, I've always told dealers to utilize the organic reach of your, of your Facebook page, creating a second Facebook page, running their advertisements and everything like that on there, and then using Facebook Messenger to communicate. The advantage of using Messenger over typical uh, conversation through 
you know, texting, um, it, you're, you, they had to engage on that platform yeah. with, with the advertisement, something on the advertisement got them to say, Hey, yeah, I want to, you know, send me a message. You know, I, I want to learn more about this event. I want to schedule an appointment. Well, that's how people you are know. communicating now. And I think right. that, you know, um, as we've kind of talked about on the modern dealer podcast over 22 weeks now, um, is that utilizing technology to communicate in its native format. You know, when Sandeep was here, we talked about uh, utilizing video mm -hmm. to be able to communicate with, with with customers. And you don't need to have a special platform to do it. This device does it natively. You can take a video and you can share it through Messenger. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Facebook is people are, are on Facebook. They're, they're going to communicate through Messenger. They're comfortable right. with doing that. So I think from my from my perspective, I think some of the success of that is, you know, dealers and marketers finally just kind of embracing this native communication instead of saying, well, the lead has to go into the CRM. Right. They have to be able to reply from an email through right. a CRM, really kind of embracing what is happening today. Well, like Gary Vee says, let's, let's do what the customer is doing now, yeah. not what – you know, oh, this report says to do this and somebody, you know, in the ivory tower says to do that, which they're passing judgment on things that they've never done themselves. I, I love when dealers say, oh, well, you know, uh, we don't, you know, Facebook, it doesn't sound like it's it's a good idea. We're going to stick with traditional, mm -hmm. which is direct mail and they're going to do TV, radio, newspaper. But as I said, newspapers got one day out of the year, which to me is I thought it would be most effective when I was at the store. Yeah. You know, when I'm writing ads for the dealership, approving ads, looking at everything and I'm like, uh, no, I don't want to be in the paper. I guess, you know, at that time I had to say yes to direct mail because that seemed to be like the only thing that we could really use. But now, yeah, direct mail still has a purpose in some markets, but combining direct mail with Facebook, um, doing a, you know, like a carpet bomb that way. If, if you're a tradition, if you're a dealer and you're just, you know, haven't made it to, to the Facebook event. If you're stuck, event, on, tra stuck, doing stuck on traditional, traditional yeah, you, can, I mean, you, can aug you can augment that by adding right. some Facebook to that as well, correct? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, just like a car with a CD player in yep. it still. When's the last time you bought a CD? I mean, why do we still have CD players right? in a 2020 vehicle? <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand. I can't remember the last time I bought one, but it's still there. Most likely we're going to you know, Bluetooth connect our music and what we want to hear. Uh, we're not it's even going to use the auxiliary all about this ports. Device. All about this device. The, the remote control to your life. Yep. I mean, this is the remote control to your life. But, I mean, it, at, the, at the core of the... Facebook advertisement is, first of all, people need to understand that, you know, all the eyes are on social media. When yeah. you walk into, like, I go to my dermatologist and I'm the youngest person at 45. I'm the youngest person in a dermatologist's office in Florida. Everybody's in their 80s or 90s. Everybody's got skin cancer. They're getting this removed. You look, you got Steve Harvey on the TV. Not a single one of these senior citizens are looking up. They're all buried in their phone, too. And they're looking at, you know, their grandkids on Facebook. They're looking, you know, I even saw some of them on Instagram, Snapchat. I can't wait till they get on TikTok. That's yeah. gonna be hilarious. <laughs> well, like, I tell you, I was actually talking to my father this morning. And the reason he called is that his iPhone, the battery died. So I think it's an iPhone 6, and it's just, it just came to the end of its life sure. uh, from a battery standpoint, and he needs to get it. And he, and he said to me, I can't believe how lost I feel because I can't turn my phone on. So, I mean, <laughs> it, you know, this is, you know, this is... <laughs> this is but, a baby boomer. You know right, what I mean? These are right. these are these are uh, baby boomers. So well, um, I mean, it, it is definitely different today. I don't care what age you are. This is the remote control of your life. What would you rather lose, your wallet or your yeah, phone? Yeah, I would. I would rather lose my wallet rather, than my I, phone. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I would rather lose yeah. my wallet too because there's not that much of me. Yeah, there's yeah. some cash. There's a couple credit cards. Yeah. Your ID. But your phone, it's like, man, if you lost your phone, yeah, it's most likely backed up on the cloud and yeah. everything. But, but still, yeah. still, you're like, yeah. I mean, <gasps> could, could you imagine going three days without your phone? <sighs> if you had to, like, if if you did lose it and you had to replace it and you got to get kind of order one from AT and T and have them deliver, yep. whatever, you know, you go three hours without your phone, you're probably going nuts. One day when Naked and Afraid reaches out to me to be on the show, I'm going to go 21 <laughs> days without my phone. It's going to be crazy. But then right. you guys will see me on, on that show one day. They're like, how did you do it? I said, I don't know. I just yeah. I, I just did it. 
But yeah, it, it's hard to go. As I said, I'd rather lose my yeah. wallet than lose my yeah. phone right now. Well, but. I tell you, if, yeah, you bring up naked and afraid. If 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 there's one thing in this world I will never do, that would be it. <laughs> well, that's why we're polar opposites, David. That's okay. why we get along so well. It is is that that's David there? This David yeah. here. So we 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 do bring yin and yeah. yang to the to yeah. the whole deal. But going back to um to to these, you know, first of all, you need to believe in the social media platform. Yeah. It's funny as I I talk to some dealers and they'll say like, oh well, you know. I don't believe in that that Facebook thing. Or I or here's you the, can't the best sell cars answer. on Facebook. Yeah, here's the best answer I've gotten back was like, oh, um, uh, what is it? I'm not on Facebook, and I'm like, I don't give a shit if you're you not on it, Facebook. Yeah. Your customers are yeah. all on Facebook. I mean, go to your if you don't believe yeah. me, walk right into your service lounge. Look at all your customers. You got the TV on, but not a single one is looking up at the TV that you're paying your cable bill for. Yep. they're all buried in their phones. They could care less what Maury Povich or whatever daytime television is on. They're buried in their phones, and yeah. that's where the attention's at. Yeah. That's where you need to be advertising. So, you know, creating that. And, and one of the things that I've, I've understood and learned in this 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 uh, Facebook advertising space, you know, they're like, well, we're, we have ads on Facebook. Well, there's an ad. There's, I mean, it's like having right. a, it's like having a TV show. It's either like a a show. I mean, either it's it's something that's got good content or something that's just got blah. Yeah. So it's like either are you watching PBS or are you watching like an action? You know, mm-hmm. it's we're all going to be in the the strength of the advertisement. Like you said, they got to have a lot of good hooks in there. Yeah. You know, they're offering you know three to five thousand over Kelly Blue Book. You know, you uh, uh, employee pricing. They have all these different hooks that you you've got to put in there versus like shop now. You know, the shop now action attached to like, you know, we have great prices on our vehicles. Please come take a look. Mm-hmm. It's not inviting enough. The consumer is just blowing past that. But when you you, you have a good ad, yeah. um, not using stock photos, and that's where a lot of dealers just, you know, fall right into that. Well, let's let our advertising agency do that for us. You know, we'll, we'll turn it over to them. And it's the same advertising agency that manages your, your, tip, your regular Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So they're going to use the same you know, the same premise of like, okay, well, let's use stock photos in a, in a really weak, weak, watered down advertisement. Yep. And that's where, you know, they have to step out of that traditional thinking. Mail companies, yeah. like, like you said, are doing them too, but they, they're still stuck in that mailer mentality of like, well, we got to, you know, have them come in on a scratch off or yeah. have them come in and check their key, have them come in and, and you know, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's well, you know what's so funny man. too is you start to think about you know just because you're you do have advertisements on Facebook, it doesn't mean that your advertisements are good, and it doesn't mean that you are utilizing Facebook in a way that it should be utilized. Now. I can guarantee that nobody has Facebook figured out. Um, everybody has a little bit different take on it. But you can also look at Facebook as a very strong advertising or communication platform. And they have a lot of different ways to utilize from an advertising standpoint. So uh, from a targeting standpoint, you know, they've made a lot of enhancements. Um, they've they've added a whole bunch of restrictions as well with what's been happening politically uh, with Facebook. But you still have a very good way to be able to target in-market customers, to have some broad targeting uh, capabilities. So from a digital standpoint, um, you can do retargeting, you can do lookalike audiences, you know, you can pump in other audience into Facebook. Uh, So you have the ability to really do uh, dynamic targeting to make sure that your ad is being presented to the right people. But in addition to targeting, you really have to look at the content um, that you have uh, that you are utilizing. So from a content standpoint, one way to utilize Facebook is to create a Facebook event like what we're talking about here. Put a big hook out there like three or $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book. We'll buy back your, your vehicle. Um, you know, We'll uh, uh, move you up to a newer, newer vehicle and keep your payment the same. You can use the traditional hooks to create some excitement out there if you're targeting to the right people. But in addition to that too, you need to look at, you know, as a dealer, you need to look at your your inventory advertisements. Now you have the ability to pull in and push in your inventory into Facebook. Uh, you can do that 
um, through uh, the Facebook Marketplace. That's one way to do it. But you know, you really get what you pay for there. It's free. So I mean, you can kind of understand what you're going to get from that. I do recommend everybody's there. Uh, but you can also create data-driven inventory advertisements. And with that, you can create auto and tender audiences based on the make, the model, the the, the vehicle type. Um, you can segment your inventory and include only specific models uh, in a uh, uh, you know in an advertisement. You can create special overlays, um, which which I see all the time. Where most people most uh, uh, car dealerships, when they're doing the Facebook advertisement, they're not even utilizing the tools that's available, such as creating a, uh, a custom overlay. That overlay allows you to get the, to that full uh, 1080 by 1080, filling up the whole space inside that ad, where typically the, you, you have a 4x3 type of image that comes off of your dealership website. So you got a big wasted space on top, a wasted space on the bottom, which can be utilized um, with marketing uh, content. So, um, And then you have what we uh, uh, leverage and we utilize, and that's creating instant experience ads, which are absolutely fantastic. And I rarely see anybody uh, create these. We create these for dealers. I think it's probably the only tier three um, uh, 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 instant experience ads that I've actually seen are the ones that we create. But you can create these really great experiences right uh, inside of Facebook without the, the customer having to leave. Um, so you have the ability not only to just be on Facebook, like you're saying, but mm -hmm. making sure that you're creating the right content, the right targeting, and then you set up the budgeting that you want to be able to do. So being in the right place, so Facebook has a very general audience. I mean, pretty much it is almost one size fits all and putting content that would be more native to the platform. And of course, the advertisements got to match the platform. You wouldn't put um, like a TikTok style video on Facebook to use as an advertisement. Each platform has a different type of audience for that's that's going to be that you're targeting on yeah. that platform. Speaking of targeting, you, like you said earlier, you could take you know, a list out of your CRM going back, let's say go back five years of sold and unsold customers that have come through your dealership, take that out of your CRM, turn a list into it, name, address, uh, excuse me, name, email, um, name, phone email, number, email, phone email, phone number, phone number, phone number, whatever yep. you have, plus their physical address. Yep. So if you have that that data, you can upload it to Facebook and you can target, you can have an audience. You can match audience. those people right on, uh, yep. right on Facebook, absolutely. And, and you created an audience right there just to pump ads to because these people have been through your showroom. They've been you know, either to your website, through your showroom. They did something more than most, most people would have. But taking a, a targeted list like that, when you have your advertisers, most, most of these, these ma direct mail companies that do these Facebook ads, they're still thinking saturation. They're still thinking, well, you know, zip code 33711, zip mm -hmm. code this, zip code that. And it's, that's not what it is. It's, it's you have 3,000 different targeting points on Facebook. So you really got to make sure that this company knows what they're doing. I would, I would actually say, you know, see what they've done to see like, hey, I, I, what type of results yeah. are, are you actually getting? Cause you know, anybody can sell you any bullshit, you know, they'll tell you like, hey, I'm the best of this, I'm the best of that. It's just like these, uh, these cell phone commercials that Verizon's really hitting on lately. And they're talking about, well, you know, everyone claims to be the best at something. You're like, oh, we have the best of this, the best network, the best of that, but it's just all a claim. You know, you have no real, real data to back it up. But the cool thing about Facebook, is like the difference between direct mail and Facebook is a, a direct mail guy can come into your showroom and, and sell you like, oh, this this is working great. This is working great. Oh, yeah, this I had so many stores that this works great on. You have no way to identify did that really work unless you call the dealer that ran yeah. that uh, that mail piece. But with Facebook, you can look at it right there and see the results like, OK, there was 600 people that engaged with that advertisement. OK. All right, well, this looks like it really works. So 600 people, and if you turn those 600, you turn 100 of them to appointments, and out of the 100, 50 showed up, and then 25 bought a car. I mean, shit, there's 25 cars right there yep. of just doing your, your math that way. 
So speaking of that, uh, we do have to get rolling. Uh, it's 22 minutes into the next, uh, the second segment, so we're going to start to getting start to get this wrapped up. But the the final thing that I want to talk about, as far as uh, Facebook advertising, is the offline attribution reporting. Now this is a, a fairly new part of the reporting um, uh, capabilities of Facebook. It is amazing what you're able to do. So just in short, I don't want to go too deep. This probably needs to be a full. Uh, uh, a full podcast, David, uh, to talk about how powerful this platform is. But basically, what you can do is you can export a report from your CRM that includes name, phone number, physical address, email address, and then you can upload that into the Facebook attribution modeling, and it's going to match as many people as they can. They're matching 95, 96, 98 percent of the people that you upload. So they're going to be able to identify your customers um, on the Facebook platform. And then what they can do, since they know everybody and who everybody is on Facebook, it's not anonymous, they are logged in, they're able to attribute what customers saw ads prior to making that purchase. So you're getting true offline attribution and you can di- you, you you can get that dialed in to provide a true return on investment. So you can look at the return on ad dollars spent on the Facebook platform based on engagement, based on if they converted to a lead, if they, you know, if they had a message uh, content. So very powerful platform um, that you should be looking at. So um, I, I, you know, I would definitely recommend think about uh, utilizing Facebook in new and different ways, like creating a Facebook event page, um, you know, u- utilizing images of real people instead of stock images, um, and then look at the Facebook attribution. If you if you have any additional questions about this, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you. This is something that you can do yourself. This is something that you can do with your advertising agency that you're using right now, your direct mail company, or you can sub it out to another, uh, you know, uh, a, a Facebook marketing expert uh, uh, a technology you know, provider as well. A lot of different ways that you can do this. So we, we have just a couple more minutes. Uh, I don't know if you have your, your three tips, but oh, it's gonna, yeah. we're going to have to keep it quick, though, because we only got a few minutes. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll, double, we'll double time through the tips. So Bird Street tips. Bling, bling, <laughs> bling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take a look at uh, events on Facebook. Check your your market to see if uh, anybody, any other dealers are running events in your market and maybe find out if you don't believe your advertising agency or whoever is telling you about the events, ask the other dealers how successful they were with the events. Uh, tip number two, place your inventory. If you're not on Facebook Marketplace, at least start there if you want to just kind of put your t- little t- tiny toe into the water and test it there. But then, you know, boost that with some inventory ads because inventory ads – uh, will I mean it, it's, it's the gonna, most powerful ad platform that we've seen so I just yep, wanted to put on there I mean, where we get the most engagement is from the inventory ads very powerful tool that will 10x your used car uh, and new cars that way that's the best way to get your inventory out there uh, and then third uh, targeting with Facebook as I said going back to your CRM you can pull from your CRM you can target different audiences and it's just so much more effective to advertise that way versus your traditional advertising because Facebook is your TV, it is your radio, and it is your newspaper. Awesome. So episode 022 now is getting ready to be in the books. Um, we're going to have this released probably on Black Friday. So I mean, if, you're, if you're seeing this when it first came out, we we thank you for uh, tuning in to the Modern Dealer Podcast. Uh, if, if you haven't already, please do us a favor and subscribe and make sure that you click the notification bell. Ding! <laughs> and uh, again, we appreciate uh, you, your, your continued support of the Modern Dealer Podcast. And for David and David, that's a wrap. Happy Thanksgiving. That is not good, David.